React 19 changed everything. The mental model of React that we once had requires a little bit of change, a little bit of shift as React moves toward the server. A lot of people are referring to React as async React. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the two big changes that apply to us developers when we're building web applications using React. So let's get straight into the video. I built a simple demo app to show us some of these React 19 changes, suspense plus use hook and the activity component. Let's start with the activity component. So what is the activity component? And the best way I can explain it to you by showing you a demo. You have a tab here that is being rendered using the activity component and you have a tab here that's being rendered using conditionals. So here's one thing I want you to check. So in the selection of the all tab, I'm going to type Michael in all posts. Now, if I'm conditionally rendering this, when I click on active and I go back, what I filled in the input should disappear. But what the activity component does is it maintains the state when I'm on the other tab. But if I do this here where I type in Michael and I click on active and I go back to all, I lose that state. So to summarize, what the activity component allows you to do is to preserve component state during a transition. And the code for this is pretty simple. You're going to import activity from React. I also have a use state here to set the active tab. I have tab one as the active tab. So you see these two buttons right here. These are the tabs I have right here. If I scroll down, all and active. So these are the tabs. And now here's how you use the activity component. In the activity component, you have mode. And then you can specify if the current tab that I've wrapped, if the current content that I've wrapped should be visible or hidden, right? So in this case, I have this use state that controls which tab is selected. Uh, the default tab is tab one, but if I click on the second tab, tab two, then we're gonna set that to active. And basically what this does is it checks. If active tab is tab one, then this activity is visible. If it's not tab one, this is hidden. Right, so pretty simple. All I do is wrap the components with the activity component and then in mode, I specify whether it's visible or hidden. And here's what's cool about activity. Whatever state is in the activity bounds, when it switches from visible to hidden, that state is maintained. That is why I can type some numbers here, click all, go back to active, that state is preserved. So some key takeaways about activity. State preservation. Activity keeps components alive in the background, maintaining their state. Better UX users don't lose their place, focus, or typed content when navigating. When to use. Perfect for tabs, wizards, multi-step forms, or any UI where you want to preserve state between views. Performance. Avoids expensive reinitialization of components on every view switch. The activity component is necessary for us to know, and because this is available in React, you can use this in Tan Stack Star. Next.js, Remix, React Start, whatever React Meta framework you use, the activity component is available. And you can see here in the tab that doesn't use the activity component, I'm basically conditionally rendering and this does not preserve the state. So now let's talk about suspense plus the use hook. Gone are the days where you're going to be using use effect to fetch data in your React apps. I'm going to show you how to fetch data using use and suspense in React. Let's look at the code. So I have this suspense page, and in the suspense page, I have a page called data page where I get posts, and this get post is a function that basically reads from a database uh, 10 posts and then returns success true and the posts. And then I get post promise, but what do I do with this promise? How do I get the contents from the promise? I take post promise, and what I do is I'm going to show you right here. I pass post promise to this component called data content. If I click on data content, I'm going to see this is a component right here. And in this component, I receive the post promises. This is a promise. And then how I get the data out of the promise is I'm using use from React. Now here's what's cool about use. Use is a React API that lets you read the value of a resource like a promise or context. So you give it a promise, a context, use can pull the data that I can then use to render on my component. So this is how simple it is to use use. I basically get the promise, right? In this case, get posts. I don't await it, I get the promise. I then pass that post promise to the, to the component. 
right? In which this component will probably render the data. And in data component, what I essentially do, I'll zoom in so you guys can see clear. In data content, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this promise to use and it unwraps the promise. And then I can get that data and render that data. Now, here's one thing that's very important. Notice how the component that I passed the promise to is wrapped by the suspense component. And this is very important because what happens is as follows. When I refresh this page, notice how I have a skeleton and after a few seconds, the data shows. What the suspense boundary does is until the data has been unwrapped from the promise, it's going to show that loading skeleton. So you see that I see a loading skeleton for a bit and then I see my data. So I can use suspense with promises, use and suspense. I have a clean way of fetching data. But wait, there's more to React 19.2 that I want to show you. We have a simple form here where we can create a post. So I'm going to type in Michael and I'm going to say, please subscribe. You should subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to click create post and you see the post popped up. But I want to show you again how this interaction goes. When I click create post, you see that the button was grayed out for a second. It was disabled for a second until the post populated. And once the post populated, I'm able to create another post. How are we doing this using React 19.2? Let's go back to the suspense page. You're going to see a data form component and I'm just going to enter it here. And in the data form component, I have this new hook called use action state. Again, this comes from react. This is react 19.2 and use action state gives me state form action and is pending. So I see I have a simple form right here. I'm passing in the action form action. And what form action is basically doing is firing off this create post. This create post is the function that allows me to write a post into the database. So if I open this right here, you'll see this is use server right here. So this is a server action. And basically what create post does is it gets the title and the body checks if they exist and then inserts it in the DB. And then we revalidate the page. So make sure that the data is refreshed. That's how if I go back to the form and I create a new post, you see that the post pops up right away. The revalidate path function allows me to do that. And then not only have I passed and create posts, but I've also passed in null. And if we look at the docs, essentially what null is, it's the initial state. And because this is a form, I expect you to fill it out. So the initial state is null. And so basically all I have to do to make this form work using use action state is I pass the form action to action. And we saw basically how create post works. It's going to get the title and the body from the form. You see form data, get title form data, get body, right? I get that from these inputs right here. The state basically allows me to check if any errors have occurred. Like for example, if I go back to the form and if I type in the title and I hit create post, you see title and body are required. I get that from state and is pending basically lets me know that the request is still pending. It hasn't been complete yet. And if it's not complete, the button should be disabled. Now, if I were to make this a bit slower for us to see this, what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to add a promise. Let's make it a bit long. Right, I'm going to save this and let's submit this form again. So I'm going to hit create post. Notice how this is great. So I can't click. I can't do, you know, I can't create another post. I have to wait for this request to resolve because it's pending is still true. And that makes it disabled. And then you see the contents are updated. So use action state, another great hook, especially with forms. But here's another cool thing I'd like to show you with react 19. Watch when I delete these posts how it grays out for a second request is firing and then I can delete another one. How am I doing this using react 19? If I go back to data content, you see I'm using use to unwrap the data and then I pass the data to again, a new hook from react 19 called use optimistic and use optimistic basically allows me to manage the state of my optimistic updates. So I pass the data and to use optimistic. So the most up to date state of my data, and then I pass in what the optimistic update looks like. In this case, what we're doing is we're deleting posts. So I'm going to use filter to filter out the post that's going to get deleted. So in doing so, I now get the optimistic post. So this is what I'll be rendering on the JSX. And then I have remove optimistic post. This is going to be used in my handle delete function. 
And in my handle delete function, you see another thing here called star transition that comes from the use transition hook. And one of the reasons why I'm using use transition here is so I can get the pending state. So in star transition, I call remove optimistic post and then I actually call the delete post function, which if I click here, it's basically deleting it from the DB, right? Pretty simple stuff. But this star transition allows me to have this is pending, which I can then pass into the JSX, into the class name to gray out the posts. So here I can, again, create a bunch of posts. I can do that. You see, like I see the updates instantly and then I can delete these posts. The is pending allows me to make sure that no other action happens until everything's deleted. And ladies and gents, with these new React 19 primitives, you can build beautiful user experiences. Now, here's the thing. I tried to use as many of the new React 19 features that we got. You don't have to use all of these, but I wanted to show you how these all work together. But that is pretty much it, ladies and gents, for this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want to play with the repo, the link will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.